Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now if this PIR, we can also use this to get the peptide match. In the patents and peptide, what is the difference? Peptide would be specific. Peptide means exact match. Exact. Right? For example, some uh, peptides tend to aggregate. Right? So even if you make a small change, one residue change, the character will change. In this case, you require the exact match. For example, if you have A T C V, this is yes, but if you get A I C C V this is not. So, if this is the case we need to find exact match. So, here you can do the peptide match. So, you give the peptides and exactly you can match. In the pattern search you can write in this way A I star C V. This you can include this and this, but in the case of peptide match this is ok, but this is not ok. So, for example, if you give any specific uh, peptides and you search right in this any database and if you see these are the proteins which we have exactly the same peptides. For example, if you are interested to find the peptides which aggregate right. So, you can give the peptides and check all the uh, sequences and see which sequences contain that particular region and are there any similarities right or differences you can do the analysis right you can do a lot of projects on this aspect. There once this is done then you can also construct some type of matrices right because we discussed about some motifs i am discussed about some patterns i am discussed about exact match if you look into different sequences and then we can try to develop some sort of matrices earlier we discussed about multiple sequence alignment and consideration score what is multiple sequence alignment aligning, two or more. aligning three or more sequences right if you have three or more sequences you align together right and finally you, you find an alignment how do you use the alignment for conservation find the yeah, as you can see the residues which occur the same position in different sequences right based on that we can calculate the conservation score and see which residues are conserved so here the psm this is the position specific scoring matrices this also provides your patterns which are inherent in the multiple sequence alignment in these homologous sequences how to do this i will explain now if you have multiple sequence alignment, you can see whether you can find any inherent patterns. So, how to do this? The basic idea is to match the query sequences right against the database sequences in the alignment table and give that high weightage to the conserved position with high weightage for the positions which are highly conserved than the variable. Then you can see some type of matrices. This will tell you, okay, for example, position number 15 alignment is present what is the probability of having alanine at position number 15? This is fine or not? If it is good then you can exactly match right then for the uh, many prediction algorithms they use okay they construct a matrix then if you can any sequence and see what is the probability of particular residue at particular position if this is the case that can be part of helix right we can uh, use this matrix for many prediction algorithms. How to obtain these profiles? So, these profiles we can obtain with a set of probability scores that for each amino acid we for in a protein we have a probability score to be uh, for the particular position in the in during the alignment. So, in this case what are the various applications compared with other measures for example, conservation and all. So, it get greater accuracy when we align the different distant related sequences and the conservation patterns also facilitate the identification of the homologous sequences because we have the high score in the case of the homologous sequences and you can see the patterns which are useful to classifying the subfamilies within a set of homologous sequences. Then if you look into the various secondary structure prediction algorithms or prediction the accessibility or predicting the binding sites or different prediction algorithms they are reliable if they have the multiple sequence alignment rather than a single sequence. Getting a single sequence they can construct profiles right like uh, heterophobicity profiles right or you can get the propensities rather than a single sequence if you use a multiple sequence alignment right I will discuss in the next uh, classes when we discuss about the secondary sequence prediction you can get that the prediction results are more reliable than using just a single sequence. So, now to construct 
phase in the matrix right i'll give you the examples how to construct the matrices so what is the basis for the phase system sequence sequence alignment so it give you the frequencies of each residue at each position in a multiple sequence alignment for example if you see one sequence here gh gv gk vv kl ga ga so i have few sequences i put for example five sequences they are uh, using the multiple sequence alignment from this based on the first sequence the one which are the same residues or conserved residues they are highlighted so if we take this is position number 1 2 3 right take the position number 1 what's the probability of having g in position number 1 what's the frequency of occurrence of glycine in position number 1 you can see one because there are five cases five uh, sequences and among the five so 5 by 5 all are glycine so 5 by 5 that is equal to 1. Likewise what is the uh, current frequency of glycine in position number 4 that is 2 by 5 right this is 2 divided by 5 right this is equal to 0 0.4 right. So now we have the 20 different amino acid residues here and the sequence here for the first case it is glycine right it is 5 here 5. And the second one, you can have the, have the five in the case of H, and the third one, we have five for E, and the fourth one distributed G two times, F one time, and K one time, L one time, right? Distributed. So now, if you have the number of sequences and make the matrix, several cases the numbers are zero. If you see, there are many zeros. In the case of zeros, they add few numbers right uh, add a number this is called a pseudo count right to avoid these uh, zeros right because when you take the logarithmic so what they do for example if you take the amino acid sequence what is the probability of each residue to be in a particular position 0 0.05 right 1 by 20 so what they do so they add 1 at the top and then uh, 20 at the bottom and then they find the pseudo count for example in this case they put 5 plus 1 divided by 5 plus 20 right what is the value then 6 by 25 right. So, we get the number 0 0.24 and then this is the one f dash ij then the normalize with this qi q is the expected frequency of a residue i at a particular position right in a random sequence they got shuffled the sequences right then what is the expected frequency of a particular residue i at a particular position because all the residues are not randomly distributed in amino acid sequences if all the residues are randomly distributed all the sequence it, whatever the sequence you take each residue should have 0 0.05 but it is not the case right I, I showed the data from the uniprot some residues are biased for example leucine leucine valine they are highly dominant and tryptophan cysteine are uh, less frequent in the in amino acid sequences right. So now if you take any sequence what is the uh, random uh, sequences what is the frequency they divide the qi then take the logarithmic that will be a score. Like the PSSM, there is another matrix that is called weight matrix. This is also frequently used in the in the prediction algorithms. How to get the weight matrix? For example, if you I, I gave four different sequences, this is a DNA sequence. So, first we construct the matrix for the occurrence of each nucleotide at different positions. So, how many positions? Six positions, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many sequences? four sequences right so you can put first a right all the all the four sequences have a second one three g's and one a and the third one one t and three g's right we can fill this matrix based on the sequence alignment then you convert this into score into weight matrix if you look into this alignment you can see consensus here is a right this is g because this is three times here will g three times here uh, g 2 times here or everything has equal probability so they put n so, this is how they put this consensus here. So, here also they make a zero count so they add the probability right for example if you have one more sequence now there is four sequence if you add one more sequence here what is the probability of having a at this particular position. One. 
first position. One. Yeah, for example, if you add any sequence here, sequence this is sequence four. Now I put sequence five. I can write anything here, right? What's the probability of having a in this position? One. One by four because it can be a. It could be T or C or G. So probability of having a is zero point two five. In the case of protein sequences, if you have several sequences and if you add one, then the probability is one by twenty, right? So here this is a P i. So this is equal to zero point two five in the case of DNA. That is one by four, and this is equal to one by twenty for the case of amino acids. So now they use N i j, right? Here N i j equal to four plus the probability. If you add one more, what is the probability of having that nucleotide? This is point two five divided by now the number of sequences will be added to one, four plus one. So here four. So now add one more sequence. So four plus one equal to five. So in this case, you can get the values. This is equal to four logarithmic of ln of four plus zero point two five divided by five. Right? Normalize with this P i that is equal to zero point two five. You do the calculations. This is equal to zero point eight five. Divided by zero point two five, this is equal to logarithmic of three point three four three four. This is equal to one point two. So this is the number. For example, if you take this zero, what what could be the value? The mat mat matrix. This is zero. Zero plus zero point two five, right? Divided by five. Then the whole thing normalized to zero point two five. So finally, you get the value of minus one point six, right? So you can convert this any alignment matrix. We have a lot of sequences. All the alignment data. So you can convert this matrix into weight matrix. Now from this weight matrix, now if you have any sequence, or you can have to identify the second structure or any specific binding site of any new sequence. You can compare. Okay, if this is belongs to a binding site, then if you have the same A in this particular position, then you can see that this A could be probably a binding site residue with any of the particular protein. Right. So likewise, they use this weight matrix for identifying the any binding sites or any other public applications. Okay, there is another one more case. So you see, we use the side blasts. What is side blast? Position specific iteration blast. Right. So in this case, we align several homologous sequences. Right. And then we use different iterations. For example, if it is a protein, and this is the possible twenty different amino acids, they give some big numbers. It's so a big number. So first, we need to normalize these numbers. So then we know which one is the preferred one, which one is not preferred one, because it has both positive and negative scores depending upon the preference of these residues at any particular position. So in this case, you can normalize between zero and one. So how to normalize the values between zero and one? So you can use this equation: x minus minimum divided by maximum minus minimum. For example, this is the, the five numbers. Okay, this is the Lowest one. So, what is the expected value for the lowest one? Zero, right? If we use this equation, right? One minus one divided by nine minus one. This equal to zero by eight. That's equal to zero. So that is fine, right? So if you have the highest one, right? What is the expected value? One. That's equal to one. So if we use this one, nine minus one divided by nine minus one. This equal to eight by eight, right? That is equal to one. So now, if you take any other values, five or six or two. What is the expected value between zero and one? So we take this five. So we get these numbers: five minus one divided by nine minus one. This is equal to four by eight. This is equal to zero point five. That is fine. So we can use this equation to normalize. So now, if you see these numbers, right, very high numbers, they are normalized between zero and one. We can see some numbers such very high, and some numbers are very less. For example, if you see any high numbers, okay, this is high, point six four. So here, this is a point five nine. Right, some numbers are very highly preferred, and some residues. Right, this is the uh, less preferred ones. So now, if you have different numbers, it is also possible to combine these numbers and make a 20 by 20 matrix. Right, instead of using different numbers, it is also possible to take 20 by 20 matrix. In this case, you can uniformly use this for different cases. How to do this? For example, if it is EC, they take all the E's. Here, here's E. Here's E. Here is E, and C. C is here, here, here. So take all the values, take them together. Finally, you will get the average value of E and C. Like this, if you see LA, combine all the LAs, and you get the numbers. If you take QD, what is the value for QD? 
this is q here this is another q here right so d is here right this one this is one this one so add up these numbers and we will get the average value we will get the matrix so finally we will get the 20 by 20 matrix this also we can use for several applications or several prediction uh, algorithms so we discussed about the position specific scoring matrices and weight matrices right so there are several potential applications for example the major applications if you see putting the secondary structures right you need a sequence if you give the amino acid sequence and there are several secondary structure elements for example alpha helices beta strands and the coils and all and we will discuss in the next class right so how to predict which regions constitute alpha helix and which region is responsible for this formation of beta sheets right we can use the psm right you can get the predicted secondary structures then you can also discriminate proteins from different classes and different functions and based on different structures that you can also use this psm to get the information then also you can also identify the binding sites or functional important sites so here also you can see right which residues are functionally important in any given protein likewise we have several applications in bioinformatics areas right and you can relate this data with the experimental data and you will see this psm as potential applications in various prediction methods till now we discussed on various aspects so we will summarize what are the various aspects uh, we discussed today hydrophobicity profile so what is hydrophobicity profile it is a sequence versus hydrophobicity it is a plot connecting amino acid uh, sequence versus hydrophobicity uh, values so what are the applications of hydro constructing hydrophobicity profiles you can get some patterns right and these patterns resemble any specific regions in a proteins based on structure or based on function typically for example helices strands transmembrane regions right when you uh, binding sites right you can see different patterns of hydrophobicity and you can use these patterns right to identify these regions then we discussed about specific patterns right so in pir we can search for patterns right how to write a pattern we can be square bracket that uh, represents what any rest any allowed residues right and then any any conserved residues right how to uh, define a conserved residue write the name write the name of the same same amino acid then any residues x. by x number of times put n so any number and curly bracket represents excluded right if these residues are not allowed in that particular position so you can write the patterns right so what is the importance of uh, identifying patterns or the peptides you can identify motifs or you can see any inherent residues right for any specific features right you can uh, check in the uniprot sequences right and see whether there is very specific for any type of proteins based on structure function right then what did we discuss after that psm psm or position weight matrix what is the principle based on psm or weight matrix positional conservation positional conservation right it will give you the positional conservation right for that uh, multiple sequence alignment they take the alignment right and they get the frequency and they convert the frequency into score right you can the matrix so you can use this matrix and the matrix has uh, several potential applications so in the next class so we will discuss mainly about the using several features and making these features requires a data set and how to construct a data set what is redundancy what is non redundancy right how to define this type of redundancy right and what are the various methods which are available in the literature to obtain this non redundant sequences and so on and later on we will see the potential applications and you can merge these features and the data set and find your problem and then you can use right to see what are the potential applications of using different bioinformatics tools thank you very much